Brisbane Broncos captain Corey Parker has announced his retirement from the game at the end of the season. Parker, who was voted into last year's World 13, has made 336 NRL appearances in his career, more than any other forward in history. The 34-year-old is set to play his final state of origin game on home soil when Queensland face New South Wales this Wednesday night. I've been very fortunate to fill a childhood dream to play for the Broncos, said Parker. At some stage, all good things come to an end and 2016 will be the end of my playing career. But the start of my new journey off the field in which I will remain part of the game. I'd like to thank my family and close friends, my teammates and coaches over 16 years, the Broncos club members and fans and the game of rugby league as a whole. Uh, Parker made his NRL debut in 2001 before earning selection to the Queensland squad in 2004. It wasn't until 2011 that he earned his first Australia call-up, eventually going on to play a part in their 2013 World Cup triumph. What a career this fellow's had though. Yeah, and he's one of those players that's got better as he's gone along, really. Yeah, yeah. Um, become become an iconic player and become a very integral part. And it's going to be missed, uh, t- to be honest. Mm. And, and you wonder, like, could he, have, could he have gone on? Would he have dropped off a face of a cliff? I don't know. But could he have gone on? And that mm. seems like he's as strong as he's ever been in the last year, 18 months or so. Uh, maybe he just wants to go out at or near the top. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well done to him on his career, though. Yeah, absolutely. Still, he'll always be remembered for me for Anthony Gallen charging him down in the, uh, in the Series down there, yeah. game. Well, there you go. Okay, and finally, Lizzie Jones has been invited by the RFL to be guest of honour for this year's Challenge Cup final and to present the trophy to the winning team, and quite deservedly so as well. Her charity work for the uh, with the Danny Jones Fund goes on unabated, and you know. Does so this mean she won't be singing? Great though? shout. Um, I don't know. It doesn't say. No. I wouldn't mind. I would merrily watch her sing again. She's uh, she's a very talented artiste. Um, and congratulations to her. Obviously, it's an honour to be off- asked to. What do you think of the people in the past? They're doing great. Who presented the Challenge Cup to the winning team. Royalty. That's, and, exactly. That's, yeah. that's, you know, heady company to be in. And I think it's indicative of her contribution and her strength of character over the last year, 18 months. The absolute brilliant work they're doing through the DFIB fund, though. Um, it's really, it's starting to make a difference. They've started to get to a point where they are delivering defibrillators yeah. to amateur club so it is it's phenomenal yeah absolutely so congratulations to Lizzie Jones right that's news from around the world of rugby league let's take a look back now at round 19 of Super League Round 19 of Super League, then our action starts this week on Thursday night in Witness, Mark. You were you had the pleasure of attending this one, um, 7-0 it, yeah. to the Wigan Warriors. For me, watching it on television, this seemed um, more like Witness, I don't want to say Witness letting you off the hook because you you know you came out and won the game, but a lot of bombed chances for oh, Witness. of course, a lot yeah. Of, in discipline and errors that led to them not perhaps you know streaking out to a you know maybe a, a sixteen to eighteen point start on you and at that point you came out for the second half and, and did what needed to be done to win the game and credit to people like Matty Smith for his game management and getting the drop goal away. Wigan deserved to win on the strength of it being a gritty performance and also witness bombing some chances. I would um I would I would support what Dennis Bett said in terms of the the better side lost. Um, is if you looked at the whole piece, yeah. But the better side won when you looked at one yard either side of the uh, either yeah. what the last the final yard at either end of the pitch. Yeah, the best team won. The team that scrambled better to put pressure on the opposition. The team that held it together in those positions. Yeah, <coughs> yeah. And give some credit. Cause I'm keen to give some credit to your defence to nil aside as well. It's not just that witness work. You know, dropping the ball. No. You were putting them under some real pressure. Yeah, but there was there was patches the where where Wigan uh, Wigan's defensive players were missing at bunches of tackles in a go, and and no, I, win, witness bombed it. Mm. Win, witness blew an opportunity. I, I don't know if the game might have turned out different if some of those opportunities were taken and the game might have opened up more or yeah or something. But what you have to give credit to is this ridiculously depleted Wigan side that played this game by by choice or by um, necessity, mm. however it might have been. But we were missing 
we're missing. I, I know everyone can talk, talk about injuries. It's not mm. like I say it's not just injuries, but credit to the boys that were on the pitch. Not yeah. talking about the boys that weren't, but we were missing. Mm. The the two players that have turned our, our team into at least having some sort of attack yeah. in, in Tompkins and Williams. Yeah. Although Tompkins was rested through choice and policy, <laughs> yeah, not yeah. through withdrawal. Uh, yes, um, we were missing all three of our, all four of our normal back row rotation in O'Loughlin, Farrell, Tompkins, and Bateman. Mm. That's four names that were in this thirty-one player meetup. Just, mm. just to point that out. Yeah, we were missing Michael McAlor, and we were missing, obviously, who's been missing for a long time. We were missing Dan Sargentson, who's been integral this year, really, because of how much. He's had to be involved. Yeah. He's, he's had more carries than any other, more carries per game than any other player in Super League this year. You know that's a lot of work that you're taking out of the team. He's created or scored, you know, he's created a lot of tries or opportunities for his teammates along the way too. And then Anthony Gelling went off at half time, who's been probably our one wild card player when Tompkins and Williams haven't been there to set up a better structured play. Hmm. Be, you know, and Smith's not been able to do it on his own because he's not that sort of player. Um, but he's good at kicking a drop goal, lad. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, fucking loves a drop goal, doesn't he? And and and, and witness on the, conversely, we're pretty much full strength. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I'm struggling to think of why they were missing people. Ha- uh, Houston is the only name yeah. that comes to head as to the head who, who who probably would have been in there. Oh, yeah, Carroll yeah. maybe, but then again, would they have played him ahead of Dudson, Manoc, Foa? Um, I Buchanan. So. I don't think so. Cahill. I don't think so. They had, they had, they had the whole Heremeyer and, and Lloyd White thing yeah. going on, so they weren't short there. Were they? they had the first choice halves in the side. Yeah. They had the first choice fullback. Hambry did look a threat, but outside backs were the ones that they were. They've been choosing most of the week. So yeah, no, absolutely. Okay, so. We'll, we'll, talk, story we'll, we'll talk about the individual errors mm. for witness when we get to the stats because three of the. Four serious bomb chances mm. uh, that you could call on were, were caused by players who were in the stats roundup. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, who had otherwise good performances? Yeah. But yeah, Witness had uh, a lot of wins on the numbers. They made more meters despite fewer carries. They had a much bigger average gain. Uh, I think it was like one point seven meters per carry more. Twice as many clean breaks as Wigan. More tackle balls. More successful offloads. Far better team tackle success. About six percent better. They even conceded one fewer penalty than the Warriors did. Um, there's only one number we need to talk about in detail to explain this result, though. 23 errors by the Vikings. More than twice as many as Wigan had, and the highest by any team in a game this year. Yeah, it didn't make great viewing on television, although I did find myself watching it, trying to convince myself that, you know, a 7-0 scoreline and a defensive effort, it was like the good old days of rugby league, but it wasn't great viewing, was it? Um, no, I mean, there was, there was tension, so... A little bit mm. towards the end, so there's drama, um, and it was exciting for us when Witness kept dropping the ball. Yeah. Um, the referee, people keep saying he, he had a good game. I don't think he had a bad referee, game. Chris, Chris Kendall. Kendall. But what I've noticed with more and more of these championship referees or what have you coming and doing more Super League games, the the play of the ball was very slow, and the picking up of whether markers were square or not was very inconsistent. Yeah, but these are two teams that notoriously both actually set themselves up to play in a similar way when it comes to rook speed and controlling the so, rook. So the referee should have slowing it down. Maybe you should have taken more action, but you know they they both do, they both have the dark arts in them in terms of yeah. you know slowing the play, and it suits both teams' styles of play. To be fair, so. Yeah, it's but a the, balancing act, isn't there? Oh, of course, yeah. I just think he could have... Because when he did start threatening penalties, obviously that was later on, so there were more tired players as well, but things opened up a lot more. Mm. Um, the game seemed more fluid for a, a brief period of oh, five brief, minutes or so. Glorious spell. Yeah. <laughs> uh, individually, Midget. Josh Charlie scored the one try of the game, 173 metres as well. Oliver Gildart, who was good, as good as any Wigan player on the pitch going forward, I think. One try assist, five tackle bus, 105 metres. Talima Tautai, very different Talima Tautai in this mm. one. No errors, no penalties. Remarkable stuff. I'm not sure if I'm still dreaming that <laughs> this could, could be possible, but significant metres 161 of them very big effort from the the big Tongan in this one oh, he's going to play fucking drops all next week now you know that don't you probably ok and who stood out for uh, Dominic witness. Crosby as oh, well sorry, in with 107 metres particularly impressive given the hyper extension of his elbow yes. that had him off the field for for quite a serious period of the game the fact that he came back on and was so outstanding when he came back on in the last two sets Wigan had he had two massive carries that really did 
solidified the position, including the carry right at the end of the game, mm. um, which, okay, the game was over anyway at that point, but he, he really put in some massive carries in the last five minutes. Fantastic. So who stood out for us in one way or another for witness then? Well, Christine... Um, Christine had 53 tackles, 15 of which were marker tackles, 5 tackles, 137 metres, but will be remembered for dropping a certain try. Yes. Uh, Patty Arvan had 5 tackles, 218 metres, but will be remembered for dropping an almost certain try. Uh, good good effort from Anthony Gellin to put some sort of pressure on him that one, just like Charlie to chase Christine back. But nah. Reese Hambry... I think Jane Tolville could have finished his try off. Potentially. Yeah. Uh, seven tackle bus from Reese Hambry. 173 metres, two clean breaks, but one drop try <laughs> over the line. Ben Flower stopping that one. Ben Flower had been that off the field back, injured. Ben was insane. Kind of came back on a little bit out of necessity, I think, but the effort, the shift he put in to, to tackle back there was absolutely brilliant. Um, Hep Cahill's the other one uh, we sort of alluded to his performance before 51 tackles 12 of which were market tackles 122 metres he is consistent he is solid he is unsung witness fans get a song about him that's not about anyone being on fire because uh, he oh, started yeah, yeah, the fucking yeah. stadium first yeah there was a small fire wasn't there fire. there yeah. was a small fire wasn't there okay uh, fan views then Mark Butler uh, you're a bad person if you let a witness player hold your baby uh, those being nailed <laughs> and there's point blank <laughs> refusing to score there was a very different way to balls up a golden opportunity time after time yeah I think the words. other opportunity that was almost certainly a try was the Kevin Brown one where he dropped it yeah. but again that was pretty good pressure from Josh Charlie on the sort of tackle where he came around the back and managed to force a loose carry mm. Tyler Cass fan he got in touch yet another error fest especially from Widnes but credit to Wigan for doing it tough with only two fit players on the bench some great last ditch tackles and Shorrox looks a future star uh, Paul O'Brien yeah, said, good, good young player yes he does look good doesn't he and Sky was saying it as much as they possibly could do but credit to the because he didn't know he was playing until lunchtime did he and he, to on be honest, th- he, Thursday, he, he, so stu- he stood like. up really well in defence, which was hmm. is going to be the question mark on a teenager coming into a side yeah. for his first senior game in Super League. Absolutely. Paul O'Brien said, poor game. Schoolboy errors and poor handling cost the Vikings. Wid- Wigan uh, not at their best and were there for the taking. Two points lost, but we've only ourselves to blame. Brian Davies, he said, agree with bets that the best side lost, but that was due to poor execution and discipline from Witness think the RFL should investigate if match fixing was involved, as there must be some explanation for why Witness played like that. Because they're not that good. Yes, and Kev the Chemic said Witness let their errors lose them the game. They made the best chances, but threw them away. Literally, in most cases, uh, we needed to have had twelve. Please. Points on the board before half, t- uh, 12 points at least, I guess he means, are on the board before half time and failed to close opportunities out. This is unfortunately becoming too common. Do you think Witness fans are the victims of raised expectations given the start they had to the season? I think that well, everything was going really well for that them. That said it, didn't he, in a couple of recent interviews where if they'd gone win one, lose one, win one, lose one, like teams like Cass, Salford, yeah. uh, Wakefield, well, no, Wakefield a little bit have done hmm. then they wouldn't be seen to be falling away as badly yeah well they're, they're just a, a squad full of average for Super League level players when you look consistently across the board yeah and, and that was worn out in this they have some really skillful players who can find holes some, some players who on their day can be weapons out wide but they are not top tier some of these players yeah so people like Arvan, people like um, Christine, people mm-hmm. like Ron Simon, people, Ron people Simon like Chris Bridge at this stage. Him, yeah, uh, you, you know, so that that's where they're at. Yeah, and they're playing where they're at, and they were playing above themselves a little bit earlier on, and then below themselves a little bit in the middle. I think the last three weeks or so, probably where they're at. Yeah, I would say so. Okay, so to Friday night then, despite. Uh, having recently sacked their coach and assistant coach, Huddersfield were able to hold on um, and fight off and and just resist us off and come back to win 31 points to 30 over the Red Devils in front of a packed house at the AJ Bell. You can't not mention the crowd, um, unfortunately. And I don't want to single out... I kind of don't want to have a go at Salford fans and Huddersfield fans 
Because we know that they've got some really good fans. Yeah. And the people who'd be listening to this are those really good fans. Yeah, those are the people, people who would be aimed at, are they? Finish work on a Friday night and make a two-hour...